Hello! Welcome back to Girls Ahead in a Book and a Merry Christmas to all of you. Now, Vlogmas has been a really big deal this year and people have been posting every day for Advent. I haven't been. Um, I'm not going to start. But I did want to do a video because I think I mentioned on my blog, if anybody reads that as well, that Kirsty on the Literary Sisters, who also does Kirsty on Books, the BookTube channel, she and I decided to start an online book club. Our first book that we're doing is Wuthering Heights, which is really exciting because that's one of my favourite books. I'm not going to do an online book review here, partly because I haven't finished rereading and also because I think that those, it doesn't really suit the format. I mean, I have so many thoughts which I've been putting in. This is my notebook that I write about um, the books I've read in and um, I have a lot of thoughts already about Wuthering Heights. That's just... That pretty much covers the first couple of the first chapter or so. So I'm going to have to really streamline it, and I don't think BookTube is the right format. Um, but I did want to show you the editions that I've been reading because they're, they're, they're quite special to me, actually. So I want to do it just to share the, the fun that I've been having. And I know as well that we've managed to drum up a few other people to join in. So just to just to share the read-along. Um, I've not actually participated in an online read-along, so I'm quite enjoying this. Anyway, the main version of Wuthering Heights that I've been reading is this one, which is the, actually the third version of Wuthering Heights, that I, well, third edition of Wuthering Heights that I've actually read, because when I was 12, 12? Yeah. I read my mum's version, which I think she, she, I know she still has it, and then shortly afterwards I bought my own version, which also had quite a lot of Emily Bronte's poetry which I really liked, but um, I'm not sure if I've actually mentioned this on booktube. I may have done because I was really upset about it. I found out towards the end of last year, beginning of this year, that um, my parents' builder had destroyed um, most of the books I owned before I was 18. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Because basically what happened was they had a, um, an extension put out on their house. Our house. I, I'm at a stage of life where I don't really know whether it's my house or their house. Anyway. Yeah, they had, an, they had an extension done. And the builder was great, did a fabulous job, except for a few tiny little minor points to do with the finishing up, such as filling in the roof. And he decided, rather than, you know, being a professional, doing it properly, he would grab some random boxes he saw lying around the attic and use them to block up the holes. Which means that the boxes of my childhood were used to block up holes in the roof for eight years. And I mean, this may not sound like a big deal because they were up there that long, but I've been wanting them down for a really long time and I've, I have really missed the books I've had up there and I've borrowed some at the library and all the rest of this and that and the other and it was traumatic. It was deeply, deeply traumatic. So I've been on kind of a um, library rebuilding drive over this year. I mean, living near a free, free books project was helpful, but yeah, my, my nice edition of Wuthering Heights was gone. So it's really cool to have this one. I don't know... How many people are aware of Pulp the Classics? They are quite a new printing, imprint, um, publishing press. Um, like last year, back in 2013, I um, got this version because it just made me laugh. It's Colin Firth and it sort of says, Lock up your daughters, Darcy's in town. It's one of my favourite book covers ever. So my mum got me for Christmas last year this version of Wuthering Heights. Um, I think that in some ways, because... Hang on, can't see me, but you can see this. Um, because of this one being like Colin Firth and, you know, everybody knows about the 1995 version of Pride and Prejudice, this one kind of, um, I think it's a bit, little bit sharper, but this cover is just really funny as well because, you know, it's Humphrey Bogart out of um, Casablanca, which is another one of my favourite films. So yeah, it just makes me laugh. Here's looking at you, Cathy. Can you see that? I think my camera's not very clear. But yeah, so this is the one that I read on the bus in the mornings and on the way back, provided that there's enough light. <laughs> the bus is, yeah. But the bus I'm on is very, very old, but it, it gets me from home to work and back. Anyway, so this is the one I'm mainly using. Um, and I, yeah, I, I do like it. But I also have this version, which is very exciting for me. Um, it used to uh, but it used to belong to um, a lady called Idre who I've known since I was four because I used to go to ballet class with her granddaughters and she used to talk to my mum while they were waiting. I mean, don't get the impression that I was anywhere, any any kind of dancer because I stopped when I was six, seven, seven I think, because the, the teacher was mean, really mean. Um, 
But my mum and her, we were, they were friends for the next 20 years. Um, and she, But she sadly, she died last year. And she was just one of the most fantastic readers, conversationalists, just people. She was just such a lovely, lovely woman. And, you know, even when I was a little girl, she always spoke to me as a person. Um, but anyway, since she died, we've uh, she's been, well, like, her family have sort of been sharing her books around with people who cared about her. My mum's got quite a few of her books, and I have her copy of uh, The Works of Anne Bronte, but I also have this one too, and it's quite cool, because it's got her name there, um, well, her maiden name. And yeah, that's, it's just very nice to have, um, just to make me think of her. Um, she was she's such a cool person, like she was a, she was a, was a Quaker, and she was a conscientious objector during, during World War II. Um, yeah, fantastic woman, really, really inspiring. And um, yeah, just lo- lovely, lovely person and sorely missed. And this is just a really lovely edition too because um, it's got a it's got a, a forward from Rose Macaulay, who was a writer during the 1940s. Well, actually, she was a writer before that. I mean, she was, I read a biography of her and several other people, uh, like Elizabeth Bowen, Graham Greene, just a lot of writers about that time, people writing during the 1940s. I, I reviewed it earlier on this year, uh, The Love Charm of Bums. And I studied a little bit about her when I was doing my 1940s module at university. So this is doubly interesting because it's a little bit of Rose Macaulay, a little bit of just, it's just an interesting edition because it's also got the biographical notice from Charlotte Bronte. It's a really, it's a vintage copy, which is brilliant. But um, it's also just nice because it was Idre's and... Um, I miss her. Right, hang on. So these are my two copies of Wuthering Heights. These are the ones I've been reading. Um, I really hope that all the people who are joining in and are read along are enjoying it as much as I am. Can't wait to find out what you all think. So Merry Christmas again. All the best. Bye bye.